Welcome back, you crazy bastard! <laughs> Finished the sale a few days ago by Stephen King. And apparently it's going to be a movie next year starring John Cusack and Samuel L. Jackson. The story follows an artist in Boston trying to reunite with his young son. After a mysterious broadcast over the cell network, it turns people into 28 days later zombies. They are fast. They will bite, but their bites won't turn you into a zombie, basically they just want you dead. To turn into a mindless fuckstick, you pretty much have to use a cell phone. Now this is Stephen King's zombie survival horror attempt, and supposedly a kind of homage to George Romero. However, with that being said, the novel isn't too good. At first glance, it's Stephen King basically writing this solely for a movie manuscript. It's as if some movie network asked Stephen King to write something gory and juicy in the zombie thrillerdom, especially now with the season 4 of The Walking Dead approaching, and all the other zombie spin-offs. I mean, it starts out as a really good page turner. And not even 10 pages in, you have people clawing at each other, biting each other's necks out. One guy even bit the ear off of a fucking dog. What kind of dickhead does that? What a bastard. The novel tries to get its hooks into you fairly quickly, but there never really is any payoff. For instance, you'll never understand what the pulse really is. The pulse. An event in the beginning of the book that sends a signal throughout the cell phone networks, turning anybody who's using a cell phone at that time into basically a 28 days later zombie. You never figure out if it's some terrorist plot or some government Conspiracy. Next, the zombies adopt a leader called the Raggedy Man, which is very spooky, but you'll never guess what the fuck he's doing half the time. He's kind of a Randall Flag light, and if you read The Stand, you pretty much know what I'm talking about. Now, the writing is subpar, coming from a man who's written gems like 112263 or even The Stand, The Shining, Misery, etc. This novel is only 250 pages and kind of felt like a short story. I mean, cut 50 pages or more, and he could have dumped this one in his collection of short stories that he puts out, I think, once every five years. Like The Night Shift or Skeleton Crew. Yeah, you get the point. Let's move on. It's like King doesn't have any time to be bothered with any answers or resolutions to this book. And I know King is already bad with endings, but I can live with the ending of this book. It's just that the writing felt so rushed. Like Tabitha, his wife, told him, hey, I need a new sweater. So he turned this crap out and sent it to his publisher, which I doubt his publisher shoots any kind of shit King puts out, especially now that he's household name. However, the slow parts in this novel are scarce. The first few pages are action, action, action. Explosions, blood, gunfire, people running for their lives, planes crashing, all kind of shit happening. And I like books that start off right into the thick of shit. But unfortunately, this book gives out a steam rather quickly. You're not going to connect with the characters like you would in other King's novels. It's just too quick of a read. In fact, you may not even like the characters. It's just too brief to make any meaningful connection with them. What I find funny is that Samuel L. Jackson's character in the book is a short white guy that's gay. So I kind of can't wait to see what kind of role Samuel L. Jackson is going to be playing. And the character basically follows John Cusack, which his character's name is Clay Rydell, to help him find his son throughout the zombie apocalypse. It's a fun read, but mainly a read for bored high schoolers. Well, have fun out there, because if you're not having fun you're reading shit like this.